Dropping shows is something that I rarely do, and by rarely, I mean that it's happened once before. This was back in my heyday of watching seasonal anime, and I could barely get through two episodes of Evil or Live. <laughs> But I'm tired of watching bad anime, and I don't have enough time to finish everything that I've watched. So earlier this year, I decided to watch six first episodes from a season, and because I could not binge the entire show, it would give me more incentive to just drop them outright. Out of those six shows I watched, two of them I'm definitely going to finish, one of them I might come back to, and three of them I fully dropped. And out of these three that I dropped, only one of them truly surprised me. So honestly, I only watched Isekai Quartet because I wanted to see a train wreck, and I was kind of hoping it would be an enjoyable one, but it, you know, it wasn't. Senko-san honestly scared me when I found out that it wasn't a 15-minute short and instead was a full-length 22-minute show. It really should have been cut down, and it felt like a lot of the time was wasted. However, we never learn. It, that one really surprised me. So I started reading the manga in March, and I'd really been interested for a while. The art looked really good, the girls were all cute, and I was missing a good rom-com hero in my lineup. So once I caught up to all the other manga that I was reading, I decided to finally crack this one open. It started off fairly slow, but it was the good kind of slow. It didn't introduce characters too fast, and Naruyuki, the main character, had a clear defined goal from the very beginning. And Naruyuki is characterized really well to make it truly feel that everything that he has, he has worked for up until this point. Ogata and Furuhashi were also introduced fantastically in the manga. Taishi Tsutsui, the mangaka, introduced them in such a way that they really did feel like geniuses, and that they really didn't know how to learn because they've never had to do that before. And all of it felt so solid and real that you couldn't help but fall in love with the characters. However, this is where the anime falls short. The anime cuts two crucial parts to Ogata's introduction, which makes it fall flat and rids it of some of the realistic characterization that she has. The crazy thing is, the, her introduction to the manga is only three and a half pages, and in the anime it's 45 seconds. Originally, the teacher asks who can solve the problem on the board, and when Naruyuki gives his declaration to be the first of the board, Ogata immediately stands up and shows just how smart she is. It gives us an inkling that Naruyuki can never compare to this genius. In the anime, it feels like she was called on by the teacher to answer the problem because she starts at the board in the front of the class, which sends the message that she's reliable. This feeling doesn't follow through, though, because when she's asked why she didn't show her work, she answers with a simple... This works great to cement her as a genius, but it doesn't explain why the teacher would call her up to the board in the first place. The second major missing piece of this scene was only actually three panels in the manga. Naruyuki gives her a friendly, but defeated, I'll beat you next time and Ogata blows this off by basically saying okay. Fatality. Not only do we get a really funny reaction from Naruyuki here, but it also shows us just how well versed Ogata is in social situations, which is to say that she's not. This scene wasn't all bad though. The way Ogata had to stretch to reach on the chalkboard gave a subtle visual cue that she's shorter than most. This really isn't necessary though, as it's stated to us when we get her character description, calling her the Thumbelina supercomputer. And having the future vision that I possess have reading the manga, her height doesn't really play a lot into the main story of We Never Learn. The introduction of Furuhashi is even more offensive and really exemplifies the major problems with the anime adaption of We Never Learn. In the manga, Furuhashi's introduction is a whopping four and a half pages, which gives her a full page more than Ogata's, but the anime decided that she didn't need quite that much time and only gets her 35 seconds. For all my math nerds out there, Furuhashi got 128% of the time that Ogata did in the manga, but only 77% in the anime. Now, I could just say that the anime cut things from Furuhashi's introduction, but let me show you exactly what they decided wasn't important enough to show. Instead of showing us that Furuhashi was sleeping instead of writing her essay for class, we're told that by some whispering classmates. The original purpose of the Whispering Classmates is to let the reader know that the general consensus of the students is that Furuhashi is pretty, um, which she is, no arguments here. Aside from simply introducing Furuhashi, this scene is meant to drill into the reader just how frightening these geniuses are, 
and show that no matter what Naruki does, he'll never reach the level these geniuses are at. Instead, all we get is that Furuhashi is really smart and really pretty, which again isn't wrong, but there's more to her than that. Furthermore, in the anime we haven't even seen our main character yet, outside of the picture on the principal's desk in the opening scene. The scene that's given to us to actually introduce Naruki is a bland, lifeless scene that could have come from any other generic rom-com. The other major scene that I really wanted to talk about is after the fight that Naruki has with Furuhashi no Gata, after he tells them that they should maybe change the subject focus that they currently have. They had forgotten their workbooks on the table, and he takes them home in order to return them the next day. While he's studying, though, he decided to glance through them. Here he learns that they really have been working hard to study, even if they don't know how. We're shown a quick shot of what the notebooks look like, but if that's all I had to go on, I would never believe that they're really studying. I mean, I do more work than that in classes, and that's not something that I would brag about. If we compare it to their notebooks from the manga, it's a wildly different story. Their notebooks are full of notes from cover to cover. The shot shown in the anime is a panning shot with no actual animation, so it wouldn't have even been that difficult to add a few more scribbles and equations to the margins. Now these are just like the major things that stuck out to me when I was watching the first episode We Never Learn, and made me realize that I didn't want to watch the rest of this adaptation. However, they're not the only things that bothered me. Warning. The rest of this video will feature personal preferences from the Seaweed Ambassador. The bright color palette of the show was extremely distracting. Specifically, the hair colors didn't fit the characters' personalities at all. I know that they're the actual hair colors from the original, but it's really hard for me to see Ogata with anything other than white hair and Furuhashi with anything but black. Ogata's white hair shows her true personality and can be seen in other anime in this genre. The character that comes to mind is Origami from Data Live. The white hair symbolizes her innocence and naivety, and it gives the sense that she is very reserved, even if she is very forward without realizing it. It also gives away the fact that she's not very good in social situations, because white hair is very rare for someone of her age, and it makes her stand out from the crowd, just like Ogata does. Furuhashi's black hair is the exact opposite. It gives her a sense of community with the other students because their hair colors are similar. It allows her to be sloppier at school, too, such as sleeping in the middle of class, because that's something a normal student would do. However, the length of her hair gives off the fact that she might be more proper, and that comes across in the way that she interacts with Naruyuki. The candy-colored hair that both Ogata and Furuhashi have betray these traits by giving them a more childish appearance. Taishi Tsutsui's decision to not screen tone the hair in the manga and instead leave them a solid black and white was genius as far as I'm concerned. So this begs the final question, is the anime adaptation of We Never Learn really worth watching? No. Go read the manga instead. That's better. Alright, so I was here editing my video, right? And uh, obviously I was listening to some banger tunes, but I was listening to this song, and I I don't understand this bit. You're gonna have to help me out because like, okay, just just listen. Bro, does she think that she's gonna be shot if she's driving in America?